Coming up, earthquake science. Just what are earthquakes and why do they occur? We'll explain. Then learn by doing. One program in Delaware is teaching kids about possible careers by getting them some hands-on experience. And it's working. I've learned new skills that I might not otherwise have learned. My original plan was culinary when I first got here freshman year, but when I got into auto tech for a four day rotation, just fell in love with it. Also incredible journey. This dog was able to find her way back to the shelter after getting lost for a couple of days. And you'll never believe what she did when she got there. Plus special delivery. Valentine's Day just got sweeter. It's our picture of the week and superpowers calling all you Marvel fans. Our pal Jackson Daly speaks with the stars of the new movie Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. What do you want people to take away from this movie, just as a total? Well, I think we just kind of hope that people like it. We want them to be kind of moved and wowed mm -hmm. and they have some laughs. This is NBC Nightly News. Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It's great to be with you. We have a lot to share with you this week, including the release of some manatees in Florida. Plus, actor Paul Rudd and his co-star Catherine Newton will be here to talk about the latest movie in the Ant-Man franchise. And a little bit later on, we'll introduce you to these inspiring teenagers from New York City who just won a Grammy. How about that? We can't wait to bring you their story, but let's begin with one of the stories we continue to follow across NBC News, and that's the aftermath of two very strong earthquakes that shook parts of Turkey and Syria recently. Sadly, many people lost their lives, but we have also seen some incredible rescues from the rubble this week, providing some real hope as searchers continue their work there. We know when you hear the word earthquake, it can sound really scary, so we thought it would be a good time to explain just exactly what earthquakes are and how they occur. And kids, you may want to grab a parent or grown-up in case you have questions. An earthquake is basically a very intense shaking of the Earth's surface. The surface of the Earth is a little bit like a rubber band. You can stretch it and stretch it, but at some point, there will be too much stress and it will break. To understand earthquakes, you must first take a look at the Earth's makeup. The Earth is a little bit like an egg in the sense that it has layers. An egg has a shell and the white part and a yolk, and the Earth has a crust, and inside it, two other layers called the mantle and the core, and that crust is broken up into a number of big pieces, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, and those pieces, which are called plates, move around really slowly one past another. These plates are always moving, but we don't feel them on a daily basis, only when an earthquake occurs. Why? Well, it has a lot to do with the edges of these jigsaw puzzle pieces, or plates. At the edges where they're touching, they're sometimes stuck together and stress builds up until a point where it breaks, and that's where you get an earthquake because there's movement on what's called a fault, a big crack in the ground. An earthquake occurs when two plates of earth suddenly slip past one another. That earthquake releases a lot of energy that travels through the crust as seismic waves that make the shaking that we feel in an earthquake. Kind of like when you throw a pebble into a lake and you see the ripples moving out. And so then when they reach us at the surface of the earth, they start to shake the ground. Experts say earthquakes happen all the time. The vast majority of them, however, are so small, we don't actually feel them. Magnitude is the most common measure of an earthquake size. The intensity of the shaking that we feel where we are during that earthquake depends on many things. How far away the earthquake was, what kind of soil is in the ground below you, what kind of building you might be in. So that's why it may feel stronger or less strong for different people. A pair of very strong earthquakes shook parts of Turkey and Syria last week. Our friend Kelly Kobiea is in Turkey. And you can see just how powerful they were right at my feet, where the earth literally broke apart, creating what is now about a mile and a half long canyon snaking down this countryside in southeastern Turkey. Why did this happen? Remember the plates. Experts say there are three plates coming together in Turkey. 
and another reason why this quake caused a lot of devastation, there were many buildings, some not built to modern standards, and lots of people living in the areas. Did you know earthquakes occur around the world, including here in the United States? They're not uncommon in places like Alaska, Washington State, Oregon, and California. When you have two plates coming together, there are often many faults in that region. And California is a great example where we have on the western side the Pacific Plate and on the eastern side the North American Plate. And there are a number of active faults in the region that passes through California. It's common for aftershocks, usually smaller quakes, to occur for days, weeks, and even months after the main earthquake. We know this could all sound very scary, but there are some things you and your family can do to help protect yourselves in the event of an earthquake. One important thing that you can do is to get underneath a sturdy piece of furniture if you start to feel shaking, hold on to it, and cover your head. And that is called drop, cover, and hold on. You should also get down low if you're outside. But first, remember to try to move away from any buildings to an open area that's not near any structures, trees, or utility poles. And stay down low until the shaking stops. The history of earthquakes can at least provide scientists with clues into where the next major earthquake might strike. All right, meantime, another story making news this week. Wildlife officials in Florida are releasing at least a dozen manatees back into the wild. The animals are being brought one or two at a time to Blue Spring State Park in Orange City. Once there, several workers are helping to carry the massive marine mammals down to a small beach where they will introduce each one back into the water. The hope is the manatees will join up with a large herd already in the water at the park and return to a normal way of life. Did you know that manatees spend most of their time eating plants, resting, and traveling? Let's switch gears now and talk about something important to all of us, education. Our sponsor, Walton Family Foundation, introduced us to a program in Delaware where students are literally getting some hands-on experience for their future. Let's get details now from our good friend, Rahema Ellis. At this high school in Delaware, students learn by doing. Polytech is a vocational school, a special kind of school that gives kids the chance to explore different career paths. I picked culinary and healthcare rehab. I want to be an architect, so engineering design technology was really the fit for me. During their freshman year, students spend time in each one of the 20 programs offered at Polytech. In my first long rotation, I'm in environmental science, and I'm really loving it. We're planting seeds right now. Polytech has 20 uh, career-related programs, technical areas, uh, which range anywhere from the health and medical field to professional services, uh, industrial arts, computer networking, and. Um, electronics engineering and broadcast media. After freshmen try out each of the 20 fields, they choose two subjects they want to learn more about. My original plan was culinary when I first got here freshman year, but um, when I got into auto tech uh, for a four-day rotation, just fell in love with it. Then students decide on one career field for the next three years, where they pick up the skills they'll need to hopefully succeed. Tavon Cotman, a senior at Polytech, specializes in automotive technology. Not only does he have a job at an auto repair shop, he's about to graduate with 10 Automotive Service Excellence certifications, bringing him that much closer to his dream career. I want to be a master tech. A master tech is someone who is certified in all aspects of the automotive field, if it's electrical or repairing, no matter what it is, he knows something about it and he's allowed to repair it. Polytech junior Molly Kenna chose to focus on the culinary arts. Our kitchen upstairs is basically a full restaurant. Like we have almost everything up there. We also do like a cafe where we basically like run a restaurant. One of Molly's dreams is running a restaurant of her own. I always kind of thought of like having my own business and starting my own restaurant. And so I feel like culinary really opened me to that because we have to do like certifications to get those skills to open like the front of the house. So it's definitely like aided me if I want to pursue that in the future. In the past, some vocational schools were limited to a smaller variety of fields and didn't prioritize the pursuit of a college education. 
But as vocational programs expand across the country, the options have two, and plenty of kids at Polytech also want to go to college. I'm really considering University of Delaware. They have a medical diagnostics pre-physician assistant program, which would prepare me for physician's assistant school in the future. Students can work in paid jobs and internships in their fields while they're still in high school. Olivia Kramer, a senior, specializes in medical assisting and has already worked part-time as a certified medical assistant. I interacted with about 30 patients a day, took their vital signs, got them ready for the provider, and just the basic medical assistant duties. Olivia will graduate with a medical assisting certification, which means she'll be able to continue working in a hospital or a medical office while she's in college. Polytech High is part of an initiative called Delaware Pathways, a program that puts over half of all Delaware high school students on a path to the workforce, giving them career training alongside traditional education. We know that our students are leaving here with skills that are already sought by employers and our, our industry partners. So the availability of employment um, and the availability of, to build skills that they can take with them either to college or through their career is here. Education experts say this learning model is not only exciting, it also provides an advantage for students from all different backgrounds. Everyone needs more than a high school education now to be competitive in the labor market today. So what Delaware has done is to say, hey, let's offer some of that post-secondary education while students are in high school. Let's give them exposure to careers, give them an early start, uh, and let's do that for all of our students. Joe Vargas, Vice President of Education at Jobs for the Future, oversees programs focused on improving learning systems and creating opportunities. It's one of those rare education uh, innovations where students who typically struggle in the education system, it works for them. It actually gives them momentum into the future. I've met amazing friends. I've learned new skills that I might not otherwise have learned. I feel more comfortable. I feel myself more when I'm here. A program in one state hoping to empower kids with hands-on skills and career knowledge before they earn a high school diploma. Okay, Rahema, thanks very much for that. We should note for parents who may be watching and want more information on vocational programs like this one, you can head over to the Today Parenting Facebook page. Okay, time for a pop quiz now. President's Day is next week, so in honor of this federal holiday, the question is a presidential one. Who was the first president to live in the White House? Was it A, George Washington, B, John Adams, or C, Thomas Jefferson? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Okay, time's up. The answer is B, John Adams. Although President George Washington commissioned the construction of the White House, choosing the site and approving its design, George Washington never actually lived in the White House. His term ended before he could move in. So that honor went to President number two, John Adams. In fact, George Washington is the only U.S. president who never lived in the White House. Now for our picture of the week, and it's a sweet one, Dexter and Pilot facility dogs at Children's Memorial Herman Hospital delivered Valentine's Day cards and smiles to patients and staff this week in Texas. Talk about a special delivery that is terrific. All right, let's turn now to the entertainment world. For all you Marvel fans out there, this is a big week. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, hits the theaters this weekend. It's the third movie in the Ant-Man franchise, and our pal Jackson Daly got a chance to catch up with two of the film stars, Paul Rudd and Catherine Newton. And kids, the movie is rated PG-13, so you may want to grab a parent or grown-up before watching. You're sending a signal down to the quantum realm. Turn it off. Now! Can you guys say your names and the characters that you're playing? I'm Katherine Newton, and I play Cassie Lang. And I'm Paul Rudd, and I play Scott Lang. Ant-Man. Um, Ant-Man. Ant-Man. Yeah. <laughs> Ant-Man, Ant yeah. Ant But also Cassie's dad. Cassie's dad, yes. I'm Ant-Man's daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Paul, can you explain Ant-Man's powers, please? Yes. So, 
Scott Lang, he doesn't really have any actual innate superpowers, but if he puts on this suit, he can shrink down to the size of an ant, maybe even a little smaller, while still retaining serious strength. He can also grow really big, so he can kind of control how big and small he gets, and he also can talk to ants. It sounds, yeah. it sounds ridiculous even as I say it. I need you to be the end man. Paul, you've been playing Scott Lang for eight years now, and this is your third movie. How does it feel? It's, it's amazing. It's such a fun part to play. It's an amazing thing to be um, working with Marvel, working with people like Catherine and other great actors, and um, and just to be a part of something that you know has such kind of a fervent fervent fan base all over the world, and people who love Marvel comics, and um, you know to get to to get to kind of work in this arena. Um, with such amazing people is a blast. You know, if I had something like this when you were gone, I could have found you. Catherine, we've seen Cassie before, but not like the, in this movie. Can you tell me about the growth? Well, it's just a different phase of her life. She's a lot, she's older now. I think we really wanted to show her relationship with her dad, you know, at the heart of the story and show who she is. And she definitely leads with her heart, which can lead to a lot of trouble because she's very impatient and kind of messy and kind of clumsy, just like me. I'm sorry. What's it like working with Paul Rudd? It's so fun. It's so much fun. I'm all ears. Good question, <laughs> Jackson. I had so much fun working with you, Paul. I really did. And he just made me laugh a lot. That's it, you know? Especially when I was trying to do a dramatic scene. You did, uh, though. I couldn't get through unintentionally. it. Unintentionally. Uh, no, uh, let me just say, uh, it, it's, it's a joy working with Catherine. I think it's a we had. Joy a, working I think with we Paul. had a really, a really great time. Yeah, it's like a satellite for deep space or the ocean. But quantum. Catherine, when you were my age, did you ever dream about being a Marvel superhero? Because I, I do. How old are you? I'm 13. I was eight when I started dreaming, and I'm definitely proof that dreams come true because mine did, and I totally wanted to be a superhero, 100%. How are you gonna be a superhero? What are you gonna do? Um, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure yet. This, he's 13 and he's interviewing you us on the funny? news. I think you're doing pretty well, you Jackson. You kind of look like a superhero right now, too, because like we're meeting you on this tripod thing. You got a sweet, a yeah. sweet uh, guitar over your shoulder. Will I be a baby forever? Am I the Hulk's baby? Dad, are you listening to your own book? But I was ready for anything. Hmm? No, that's, uh, Steve this is the radio. Paul, you're a dad. What do your kids think about you playing Ant-Man? I think they think it's pretty cool, but they m certainly make sure that I never get too big for my britches by constantly reminding me that, you know, I'm not Iron Man, I'm not Black <laughs> Panther, I'm not Captain That's America. So mean. Yeah, but this is also a good, healthy relationship that a child right. should have with their parent. They look at me as a, as their dad first, and and their job is to not let me get too big of an ego. But boy, they've got a lot of work cut out for them because this Your head, head is, is huge. And it's, it's amazing. It's even fitting into the screen. Right, right. The two of us can even sit in the same areas. Wow. I might start referring to myself in the third person from here on out, if that's okay with you, Jackson. It's just that what Paul totally Rudd fine. is all about. <laughs> that is totally fine with me. Great. Thank Where? you, Jackson. Where are we? Catherine, as you mentioned, Cassie grows a lot and has to be brave for her family. What would you say to some kids who have to be brave? Well, that's a really good question. Yeah. I would say what you said to me. Which was what? Don't hold back. He told me not to hold back before we started filming. And I feel like, like you're 13, you're gonna have so many opportunities in your life, whether it's just to like show up for your friend or you know try to be a good kid in school or something or play on a team. And I think whatever opportunity you get, you have to really kill it, and they go by so quickly. So to be brave is one thing, but if you get the opportunity to be brave, don't hold back. And don't be afraid to fail, because right. what's the worst that can happen? You'll learn something, and you'll be stronger for it, too. Builds character. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Paul Rudd. Um, <laughs> well, Paul Rudd says you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. The hell of your league. Ant-Man. What do you want people to take away from this movie, just as a total? 
Well, I think we just kind of hope that people like it. We want them to be kind of moved and wowed, mm -hmm. and they have some laughs, and then they get scared, and then they think about how they might change their life going forward in some constructive way, and then think about maybe charitable endeavors that they could do after the fact, <laughs> set up uh, a school perhaps for uh, some other, some other, uh, you know, something underprivileged in uh, other parts of the world. We want this movie to change the world. I'm an Avenger. And I've called the other Avengers. You're an Avenger. What message do you have for all the Marvel fans out there who are excited to see this movie? I think we just want to say, first of all, thanks for being excited and going to see the movie. Yeah. And we just hope you really like it. You know, the Ant-Man movies are fun to make, and it was fun making this one because it was so much bigger. It felt epic, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we hope you like it. I'm sorry, Jesse. Jackson, thanks very much. What a fun assignment. Now let's head to El Paso, Texas for a story about love and finding your way home. After a few days alone on the streets, a newly adopted dog traveled over 10 miles back to the shelter that kept her safe. Our friend Valerie Castro has the lost dog's incredible journey. At El Paso's local animal rescue league, one husky mix has always stood out from the pack. So Bailey's always been kind of a character. She likes to hug. She's super friendly, um, lovey, cuddly kind of dog, but she's big. And our big dogs don't get adopted as quickly as our little dogs do. That's Animal Rescue League director Loretta Hyde. She worked hard to get Bailey into the right home, but not long after her adoption, the call came in that Bailey was on the loose. We put it on every social media outlet that we had to let people know, and then they were saying, okay, we've seen Bailey at certain sightings. Boom, we'd take off, go look for her. But by the time you get there, they're gone. You know, they don't stay in one place. Reported sightings of Bailey by concerned community members kept moving in the direction of the shelter. Night before she showed up, I told one of our board members that had been out looking for her that she's on her way home. And she goes, you're crazy. I said, mark my words, that dog is going to be back at the shelter soon. And sure enough, after two long days in the middle of the night on the shelter's ring camera, this notification. They looked on the ring camera and go, is that Bailey? And they turned on the, the ring camera f microphone and go, Bailey? And she jumps up right in the middle of the camera like, yeah, hello, it's me. Let me in. I'm cold. I'm hungry. We're going to do we're going. Bailey traveling over 10 miles all the way back to the shelter. Animal Rescue League employees rushing over in the middle of the night, making sure this beloved dog got food and shelter. It's okay. It's okay. Send it. This energetic dog now safely settling back in with her new family. For Bailey to get this much attention, I just hope it brings people to make them aware that shelters have wonderful dogs and cats that need to be rehomed. Ah, Valerie, what a great story. Thanks for bringing that to us. Finally, in our Inspiring Kids series, a group of teenagers from New York City took home one of the highest honors in the music world recently, a Grammy. The New York Youth Symphony won for Best Orchestral Performance in a category with some of the most famous names in classical music. Our good friend Harry Smith has the story. Out of the shadows and solitude of the pandemic came music, beautiful, transcendent, and surprisingly youthful. Yay! That's Michael Repper, conductor of the New York Youth Symphony, reacting to their Grammy nomination. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. One week till the Grammys, right? The fact that they're the first youth orchestra, that we're the first youth orchestra to ever get this nomination, is both thrilling and shocking. Somehow, the Youth Symphony figured out how to record an entire album while socially separated, section by section, part by painstaking part. Cellist Noelia Carrasco. I was like ready to do anything. I was ready and willing. And so hearing this project and with it being my first year with the orchestra, it was just so exciting. 
Remember the spring and fall of 2020? Indoor concerts were viewed as super spreader events, rehearsing together out of the question. Clarinetist Joshua Choi. But I really missed gathering everyone in one big room, being able to play as loud as we can and being able to connect. I just really miss that sound. All of the compositions on the album are by black composers. Well, we could make a recording of another Brahms symphony, or we could share this remarkable music by these tremendous composers that should be known. The pieces by Florence Price, Jesse Montgomery, and Valerie Coleman had not been recorded before. Violinist Jessica John, just 12 during recording. I myself didn't know these composers before joining New York Youth. And in that way, New York Youth has sort of, it's sort of been like a gateway for me to explore more of these composers. Their purpose-driven performance landed them in contention against orchestral giants, the Berlin Philharmonic with John Williams and the LA Philharmonic with Gustavo Dudamel. Bassoonist Kennedy Plains. Well, I thought it sounded good, but I never thought like New York Youth Symphony good would also be like Grammy nominee good and like Berlin Philharmonic good, so. I saw the news. And I, I ran into my room, told my roommate, and we're just staring at each other for like 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this piece by Valerie Coleman is called Umoja, Swahili for unity. We were all isolated. We were all in our homes, and what do we want? We want to come together, we want unity. If even from a distance. Harry, thanks very much, and congrats to the New York Youth Symphony for their Grammy. That's a huge deal. Well, that's going to do it for us. Parents, just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com, and we'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. Thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long.